Stephen Paddock, The Mind of a Mass Murderer. October 1st, 2017. The Route 91 Harvest Music Festival was in full swing on Vegas Boulevard, right in front of the Luxor and across from Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. Everyone was having fun. Country singer Jason Aldean was performing his last song of the set as the crowd of 22,000 people sang and danced along. At around 10.05 p.m., amidst all the music, shots began to ring out in rapid succession. One by one, people dropped to the ground. Concert goers rushed out in masses trying to get to safety. Then, 10 minutes later, the gunfire stopped. Over 800 people were injured, trampled, or hit by gunfire, while 52 people lost their lives. Completely dumbfounded. Eric Paddock from Orlando, Florida was completely dumbfounded when he found out his brother Steven had gone on a shooting spree. It felt like Mars just fell into the earth as he put it. For him, he knew his brother was just a guy who stayed at hotels on the strip, gambled his money, and attended various shows. Born in Clinton, Iowa, Steven was the oldest of four sons by Benjamin Paddock a bank robber who was once arrested for his crimes in 1960. After escaping prison in 1969, Benjamin was listed on the FBI's most wanted list. Stephen graduated from California State University with a degree in business administration. He worked for the U.S. Postal Service for two years. After that, he started working for the IRS until 1984. By the end of the 80s, he was an internal auditor for a company that went on to merge with Lockheed Martin. On the side of his main job, Stephen ran a real estate business with his brother Eric. He was estranged to his other two brothers. Stephen went on to become successful in his real estate ventures, owning several apartment buildings in LA and Texas from the 70s to the 2000s. In 2015, his IRS records show he made five to six million dollars in the sale of his real estate properties. However, despite having a knack for business, Stephen also loved to gamble. He was seen as an avid gambler, preferring to play video poker. Although he wasn't considered a whale by casino managers, he did frequent high roller tables. It's unsure how much he actually earned from gambling, but it's believed to be substantial. In his personal life, Stephen was twice married and divorced. His family says he was on good terms with both his ex-wives. A significant amount of wealth. According to reporters, months before the shooting, Paddock's financial situation wasn't as good as years before. Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardo said that Stephen was losing a significant amount of wealth since September of 2015, and this caused him to go into a depression. People around him noticed that he often reeked of alcohol, even at the start of the morning. He also took anti-anxiety medication, including Valium, months before the attack. At the start of October of 2016, Stephen did something unusual. He began ramping up his gun purchases. Although he was already an avid firearm owner of mostly handguns, this time, in a span of a year, he bought over 55 firearms, many of which were rifles. He also bought lots of accessories for these guns. Just before he began his attack, Stephen was dating a woman, Mary Lou Danley, a dual citizen from the Philippines and Australia. Before the attack, he told his girlfriend to go back to the Philippines. Days after, he sent her $100,000, telling her to go buy a house. It's believed he sent her away so she wouldn't interfere with his plans. Days after this, he was seen with another woman, a prostitute. It's believed the woman isn't involved in the shooting in any way. Shots ring out. About 100 yards away from the stage, concert goer Justin Zimmerman was enjoying the show with a group of friends. Then they heard pop, 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 pop. Like most people in the concert, everyone thought it was firecrackers or the sound guy messing up the audio. Shortly after, though, chaos erupted when people realized it was the sound of gunfire and there was an active shooter. Steven had checked into the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino on September 25, 2017. He brought 10 shooting range bags and several laptops. 
The night before the shooting, he moved into the adjacent suite, room 32134. It was connected to his previous room, and both suites offered a good view of the festival grounds. Paddock set up multiple firearms in his hotel room. This included rifles resting on bipods that were mounted with high-tech telescope sights. There were 14 AR-15 type rifles with added bump fire stocks, allowing it to shoot like a semi-automatic. He used the later gun to fire down at the concert crowd. Before the attack, Stephen also took precautions in case the police arrived the moment he would start shooting. He placed a baby monitor on a service cart just outside his room. Minutes before attacking people on the festival grounds, hotel security guard Jesus Campos tried to enter the 32nd floor for an unrelated reason, but discovered the hallway door was screwed shut. When Paddock noticed him, he fired approximately 200 rounds through his door and wounded the security guard. He then turned his sights to the festival grounds at 10.05 p.m. Ten minutes after opening fire, the shooting stopped. It's believed that by this time, Stephen had already killed himself by pointing the gun through his mouth. Police shared that the first two police officers reached the 32nd floor before they were joined by an additional eight LVMPD officers. By 1055, members of the SWAT team entered and had gotten close to Stephen's suite. The rooms of the entire floor were cleared, and 65 minutes after the shooting started, the police broke into his room acting alone. Police thoroughly went through Stephen's hotel suite. They discovered multiple firearms, but also found handwritten notes. There were calculations for bullet trajectory. It took note of elevation, distance to the target, and other details to help maximize his aim. Several laptops were also found in the room. One of them was missing a hard drive. Forensics went through the contents of the laptop and found hundreds of images of child pornography. It's worth noting Bruce Paddock, Stephen's brother, was arrested weeks after the incident in North Hollywood for possession of over 600 child pornography images. The charges on him were later dropped, though, in May of 2018. Other things discovered in Stephen's possession was ammonium nitrate, usually used in improvised explosives. It was found in the trunk of his car. It's believed, however, he had not created any type of explosive device. When police raided his home, they found more firearms. When it came to the question of motive, though, police were initially baffled. All they knew was that Stephen acted alone during the rampage. Although the Islamic State of Iraq said Paddock converted to Islam six months before, U.S. officers say they saw no connection between Paddock and them. Speculation ran that Paddock had an unaddressed brain pathology, which was benign, but when his brain was studied by Stanford pathologists, they found nothing abnormal. But they point to the possibility he may have suffered from mental health issues that were undiagnosed. A year after the shooting, the FBI Behavioral Analyst Unit shared findings in a report that details the personality and profile of Stephen. According to them, Stephen kept most of his thoughts private throughout his life, and this included the ones about committing mass murder. In the end, the analysis only reinforced what was the initial findings of the local police investigation, that Paddock had no explicit motive to commit the crime and that he acted alone. The FBI adds that not having a single motivational factor isn't unusual, even if Stephen didn't fit the typical profile of a mass shooter. It's likely all he wanted was to die by suicide and gain infamy in the process by prompting a mass casualty. The FBI also adds it's likely what he wanted was to have control over his ending. They speculate he may also have been inspired by his father, who was a career criminal. The panel said that Bruce Paddock had created a facade to keep his true identity as a criminal hidden away. By doing so, he was able to gain notoriety. Stephen's careful planning of the crime spree, from collecting guns, researching police tactics, ballistics testing, and choosing the location, mimicked this and indicated his need for control. Since the 2017 mass shooting, the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival has ceased running. 
Today, many still grieve for their losses on the day Stephen terrorized the concert goers of that festival. Many families and friends still want answers, but it seems whatever his reasons were, Stephen Paddock was determined to take it to his grave. We have new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you enjoyed this one, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for tuning in this week, and we'll see you soon.